Hi guys, today we're taking a look at Govi's TV Backlight 3 Lite. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Now this is one of Govi's latest products that gives a more immersive viewing experience when you're gaming, watching movies or TV shows. With the lighting expanding the viewing experience onto the walls, and it's the perfect upgrade if you're currently using Govi's Backlight T1. It features a new generation of chip, offering a 20% increase in processing power, more accurate color matching, an upgraded LED providing a wider color range, with it being brighter too, and there's a new camera design for easier installation. So I'll show you how to install this, set up the app and the settings to get the best immersive experience together with testing out the performance, and I'll take you through what's changed from their previous T1, showing you any new features and highlighting any pros and cons to give you a better idea if it's worth getting or not. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release and if you have any questions drop them in the comments section below let's unbox this and take a look at what you get in the packaging you get some documentation an led strip which has 30 leds per meter and a waterproof cover over it where the corners are flexible for ease of installation and on the back there's a 3m sticky pad and it has a cable with a usb type c connector on there there's a controller box that has three buttons and a microphone built in there's a 3m sticky pad on the rear allowing you to stick it on the back of your tv you get a power adapter with a dc connector a cable with a usb type c connector on both ends one alcohol prep pad some clips for cable management some orange sticky pads used for calibration and finally the camera removing the lens protector it's got the govi logo at the front with a glossy finish around the tip underneath there's a single camera the top is 15 and a half centimeters long and the back is seven centimeters long you've got rubber on the areas that touch the tv so at the back and the top with the length being just below three and a half centimeters with a hinged design and a type c connector on the back with a good build quality there's two setup options available for the TV backlight, a 55 to 65 inch version and a 75 to 85 inch version. I've got the first option as I'll be installing it on my LG OLED G3, which is 65 inches in size. The installation process is quite simple and I'll briefly run you through it. First, wipe down the area at the back of your TV where the LED strip will be stuck on. Then clean with the alcohol prep pad, ensuring you clean all the way around the TV. There's four different starting positions for installing the LED strip I'm starting on the bottom right hand side of the TV when facing the back and all you do is remove the tape from the 3M sticky pad and stick the LED strip light moving upwards in a single line and then stick on one adjacent side and do the same on the remaining sides and you can use the small clips provided on the corners next connect up the controller box plug in the DC connector from the power adapter and then connect the USB type C connector from the LED strip light into the lower port and finally Finally, taking the double sided USB type C cable, plug in one end into the upper port on the controller box and the other end connects to the camera. Then mount the camera on top of the TV at the center point, making sure it's perpendicular to the TV. Now we can power this up and even before setting this up from the app, you can control it standalone with some basic functionality via the control box, which has an on off button, color selection button and the final button doubles up as both a music sync and dimmer button. Now adding this to Govi's app is really easy. Coming over to my Android phone, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and starting up the Govi app, click the plus icon in the corner and you'll see it picks up the TV backlight automatically with the model H6099. Press the power button on the control box to pair it and click done. Then we can move on to calibration, select the strip light direction, add to your Wi-Fi network, but this isn't mandatory, but it's worth doing if you're planning to use with Amazon or Google voice control products. Now it's asking to stick some foam pads onto your TV, which will assist with calibration. You don't have to do this, but it helps with identifying all the seven calibration points to get a more accurate color match. Stick the foam pads onto each point and drag the points to each of the points where the foam pads are stuck on in the app. And that's it, you're done. The Govi app has all the same functionality as with their previous backlights. So the dream view, effects lab, timer, brightness adjustment, modes, and the snapshot list, which allows you to save your latest mode and parameters you have allowing you to activate them when you tap to run, auto run, or even control with both the Amazon and Google voice control devices. Taking a closer look at the modes, you have music mode where you can have the LED strip 
syncing to the sounds in the room. Color gives segmented control, allowing you to set your own static colors, adjust brightness levels, and even turn off segments. Scenes has a selection of predefined scenes, giving some cool effects. DIY gives you the ability to create your own scenes. And finally, we have video mode, which has two modes of operation. The first one is game mode, which is more responsive to changes on the screen and movie mode, which changes at a slightly slower rate to give a less flickery effect. I'd say to get the best immersive experience, you'd want to set the saturation levels to around 42% and adjust the white balance using a pure white image displayed on the screen. And it's worth mentioning the LED is RGB ICW. So it has RGB and white, whereas the previous LEDs just had RGB, but no white. So it gives a better white level. Then there's part and all. Part displays multiple colors on the LED strip, whereas all displays only a single color at a time. Turning the sound effects option on will allow the LED strip not only to work in conjunction with the changes on the screen, but also with any sounds in the room and react to that. It's quite cool when watching a music video, but personally, I feel it's best to turn this off when gaming or watching a movie. Next, we have a new option, which is blank screen settings, which automatically turns off the LEDs when the screen brightness is continuously low, or you can set it to turn off if the hue is continuously the same. There's a lot of functionality available in the app, which provides a ton of customizations with a pretty intuitive interface, which is something I've really loved about Grovey's products. So really impressive. First, let's test this out with a color wheel. Brightness levels are set to 100%, and as you can see, color representation is really good with a color wheel spinning, and it does a great job matching the colors with minimal lag. And one immediate improvement is that if you had a TV unit with a glossy finish, there's no impact to the quality of the colors like with the previous Govi TV backlight kits where I had to cover my TV unit to improve the quality. So for me, this is a massive improvement. Onto the color smoke effects traveling across the screen and the camera does a great job replicating the colors and the lighting remains dim in the dark regions. I'll let this run through for a bit so you can see for yourself. Now testing with movies, and it's no surprise it works perfectly. And even when there's a letterbox effect, it doesn't reduce the lighting and it still works really well. As you can see here, there's a good amount of coverage on the wall from the LED lights, giving a great immersive experience. And this also helps to reduce eye strain when watching in a dark room. I'll let this run for a bit so you can see for yourself. Moving on to gaming, and I've played a number of different games to test out the performance of how well the camera translates the colors onto the LED strip light. So playing Forza Motorsport, which is a racing game, and FPS games like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, plus RPG games like Spider-Man 2, together with Fortnite and Astro's Playroom, which are both set in quite a colorful environment. Performance was generally pretty good, and the camera does well to keep up with fast action on the screen translating it back to the LED strip light. It even works well in dead zones, and this is where light levels are low or dimmer than the rest of the screen. It does a really good job translating between the colors, but in really fast action, you may notice a subtle lag as it attempts to keep up, which is no surprise as this is a camera-based system, but I wouldn't say this would be a deal breaker in any way. Now let's test out the difference between movie and game mode. Viewing both side by side, playing the same footage, you can see in movie mode, the response is slightly slower with a lag in the color transitions. But the transitions between the colors is smoother, whereas when game mode, the transitions are faster with at times a slight flicker to it. In terms of which is better, personally, I prefer game mode with its faster transitions. Dreamview is also supported where you're able to link up to seven different lights in this mode to give an even more immersive viewing experience, which seriously looks so cool. Testing out the black screen detection and in a dark room, it did a great job with it turning off within the specified time and automatically turning on when the TV is turned on again. But it was a little bit inconsistent when the room was bright as the reflections on the screen made the system think it was on. I did try with the low brightness option and also with the same hue option, which did help to some extent. But if the room was bright with reflections on the screen, it wouldn't turn off. Now as a side-by-side -side comparison with the previous T1 model. So let's initially take a look at the cameras. You can see the T1 camera is slightly smaller and lighter in weight, but you'd have to stick it to the top of your TV 
something which I was never keen about. But with the 3 Lite, it feels slightly heavier with a better build quality and the hinge design allows you to place it on your TV without having to stick it, which is much better. Both cameras have a 180 degree viewing angle with the 3 Lite having fish eye correction, which adjusts the edge distortion of the screen, obtaining a larger screen area, which allows for more accurate color matching. And it also has a chip upgrade, providing more processing power than the T1. Both systems have the same number of LEDs per meter, which is 30, but the T1 only supports RGB IC, but the 3 Lite has RGB RGB ICW with it supporting white to give a much better color representation. And with the 4-in-1 LED beads, the backlight perfectly matches the screen contents. The controller box for each system still looks identical, providing the same functionality. In DreamView mode, the T1 can only support five wireless devices, whereas the 3 Lite can support seven. The 3 Lite also has matter support and black screen detection. Showing a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the improvement in color reproduction for yourself. I'll let this run through for a bit. If you compared it to the Philips Hue sync box or Light Me Neo, which are both dependent on a signal from a HDMI source, so you'd have to plug in a device like a satellite receiver, cable TV receiver, or even a gaming console for it to work. And there's different restrictions on these devices. So on the Philips Hue sync box, it only supports 4K at 60 Hertz and Light Me doesn't support VRR. And with HDR turned on, colors are a little bit more washed out. Together with neither supporting the inbuilt apps or syncing when you're using the built-in tuner to watch TV shows directly from your TV. Whereas with Govi's camera-based solution, there's no limit limitation with it working with anything appearing on the screen making it the best all-round solution. So in summary, Govi's done an amazing job with their latest TV backlight where the color representation doesn't get impacted if your TV unit has a glossy surface, which was a massive positive for me. It has a new upgraded chip that has more processing power than the T1 and corrects the fisheye function, adjusting the edge distortion, allowing more accurate color matching together with an upgraded LED strip, providing a wider color range. Positives wise, the system does a great job in providing a more immersive viewing experience with good color reproduction beyond your screen onto the surrounding walls. It's a generic solution that works with whatever is being displayed on the screen and it doesn't rely on a HDMI source so it doesn't restrict your refresh rate in any way plus if you had a smart TV you can use any of the inbuilt streaming apps and it works perfectly. And the 3 Lite is an all-round solution for your TV backlight with better color matching technology at this price range on the market. Negatives wise on fast action you will notice a slight delay in the colors changing as it's a camera based solution but nevertheless Govi's TV backlight 3 Lite does an amazing job at giving you a more immersive viewing experience with no restrictions making it a perfect upgrade if you're planning on upgrading from the T1 or looking to get a new TV backlight kit. So there you have it, you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. For those of you who've got to the end of this video, please leave a comment with three light as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified on my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.